Hey there, today I want to show you some very nice tag mates given by a pawn, but what I mainly want you to get from this video is to learn that the pawn can be used as an attacking unit. And we're also going to improve our tactical skills by learning some very nice tag mate patterns. So let's get started with the first position, which is probably the most instructive one. In this position, black is a queen down, and black has the option to take the queen. That would be good enough because this knight on the 8 is quite misplaced, but given a checkmate is stronger than win a queen, and in this position the king on b4 is actually quite misplaced, it doesn't have any squares to go, so all we need is to have one more attacking piece. Now let's imagine that we had a pawn on c5 instead of a knight, that would actually be a checkmate. So once you see this idea, it is very simple to find black's continuation, which is the move knight to a6, giving a check, and ready to give the c5 square for the pawn. In the game white went king to a4, after king to a5 we're gonna get a very similar idea, knight to b4 as we'll see is going to be very strong, or if white goes king to a3 with the idea to block any discovered check with the move bishop to a4, here black has a few options but the simplest is to force the king to a4 and then after king to a4, knight to b4, in this line we get a checkmate with the rook, but in the game after the move king to a4, now we can see black's main idea, which is to go knight to b4, just giving the knight, forcing king takes b4, and after c5, we get this very pretty checkmate with a pawn. Now let's move on to the next position where the victim was none other than former world champion and arguably the best ever, Magnus Carlsen. Black has a good position, but black has to go bishop to f8 which might look a bit passive at first sight, but the idea is to bring the king to g7, and then this bishop might also get active on this diagonal, plus black is a pawn up, black also has pressure on a2 and g2, so this would have been great for Magnus, but instead he went king to h7, which makes more sense at first sight, black pieces are better coordinated here, but the problem is that after knight to g5, white is gonna get a very pretty checkmate with a pawn that was actually quite hard to see in advance. So here black has to take, the king doesn't have anywhere to go, so taking on g5 is forced, and after pawn takes, knight to h5 is pretty much forced, because after bishop to h6, white will simply capture on h6, then capture the rook on h8, and keep on attacking black's king. So knight to h5 actually looks quite good for black, because even though white might try to get the piece back, for example after trading rooks, and then go g4, Black is gonna get a material advantage, now black can start collecting pawns, like the pawn a2 or the pawn e5. But here comes the shocker, the king on h7 looks safe, but it is not, after rook takes h5, g takes, and bishop to e4, what is given a check, which is actually not a checkmate because black has the move f5, but now white can take on f6 and passant. However, white has to be a bit careful because if white takes with the g pawn, then after king to h6, this is not a checkmate, and black will keep his material advantage and actually win the game. But instead, here white takes with the e pawn, and now h6 is covered, so we get a very pretty checkmate with a pawn capturing unpassant. Now, the next position is another very unique checkmate because we get a checkmate with a pawn and with a king on a central square. So a checkmate with a pawn is strange, and a checkmate with a pawn and a king on the center is particularly special. In this position, black could actually take on the 1, because after the king takes on e4, black can take on the 8, and here white doesn't have any intermediate moves like bishop to f6, attacking the rook because the knight on e4 is covering f6, so taking the queen in this position was good enough. But black played even a stronger move, knight to b4, giving a check, if the king goes to c4, black will simply capture on the 1, and pretty much everything will be hanging on white's position, so white tried the move, king takes e4, and after f5, we get this very pretty checkmate with a king on e4. Now let's move on to the next position, which features some very complex tactical ideas. So here white has sacrificed a full rook to try to keep black's king on e8. So white has compensation, but this position can be risky, black will try to consolidate and keep the extra rook. For example, developing on the queen side, bishop to b7, c6, queen to c7, and try to castle long, might be an idea. So white has to be quite concrete and quick, 
Here the move bishop to h6 is an idea, but it will not threaten to capture on f8 because the rook on f8 is defended by the bishop on c5. So here this is the perfect example of involving pawns in the attack. Here white went e6, planning to either open lines against black's king or use the e-pawn as an attacking unit. So first of all the pawn cannot be captured with the d-pawn because it is pinned. Taking on f7 is a big threat, as we'll see. There might also be ideas to go e7. So this pawn e6 is definitely annoying, so the first line that we could check for black is to take on e6. In the game black played knight to d4, that we'll cover later, but taking on e6 looks like a very logical move, at least to consider. But here after f7, now we see another pawn used as an attacking piece. Black has to go king to e7, if rook takes, queen takes is a checkmate, and after king to e7, here the move bishop to g5, giving a check, and then collecting the queen, looks very tempting, but since we're trying to improve our tactical skills, whenever you see a good move, you can look for a better one, here the move queen to f6 will force a checkmate after king to d6, bishop to f4, king to d5, and queen to e5. So taking on e6 doesn't work for black. Another move that we could consider is the move c6, because this bishop is actually quite annoying, eyeing the king on e8, and here we can see white's main idea, which was actually quite deep, which is to take on f7, and after rook takes, go queen to h8, it is important to give the check on h8, because the king is ready to come back to e5 in some lines. So after rook to f8, f7, king to e7, and queen to e5, we get another very pretty checkmate with the queen on e5. So here black can try bishop to f8, and now the move bishop to h6 is actually quite strong. In any case, going bishop to f8 already feels quite uncomfortable going backwards when you have a king on e8, and black's piece is actually tied down, and there's nothing to stop the idea of taking an f8 and then going f7. For example, after black takes on b5, white simply takes, and after rook takes and f7, we get this similar checkmate with the queen on e5. So in the game, black tried the move knight to d4, which makes sense because the knight is centralized, it is attacking white species, particularly the pawn e6. But on the other hand, the knight on c2 was actually covering the e1 square. So now white can bring the rook to the e file after taking f7, rook takes, and rook to e1. So here in the game, black played bishop to e7. Black has to block the check on e7. Knight to e6 will not help because after rook takes, Again, the pawn on d7 is pinned, so black cannot capture on e6. And after rook to e7, here we get a very nice checkmate with the pawn f7, similar to what will happen in the game, which was bishop to e7, and after queen to g8, rook to f8, f7, we get this very pretty checkmate with the king on e8, and the rook on f8 being unable to capture the pawn f7, because it is pinned. And before I move on with the last position, if you want to seriously get better at chess, besides improving your tactical skills, I have a free course that will provide you with a training plan for that, so feel free to check the link in the description. So let's move on to the last position, which is a more artistic one, this is an ending study, this didn't happen in a game, but it is still a very nice position to show a checkmate given with a pawn. In this position, White is actually winning, amazingly, and we can find the best move by process of elimination. So here taking on g5 is definitely not a winning try because after king takes, white even has to be careful not to lose this ending being a pawn down. But if we see that black's king is lacking squares to go, and actually black's pawns are not mobile even though black has an extra pawn, the move h3 comes to mind, which leaves black with two options, either to go g4, which would lead to a checkmate after we take on g4, or taking on h4, which makes a lot more sense. So now black has two extra pawns, and white has only the h pawn. But here after the move king to f4, we are still using this idea that black doesn't have good moves. The move g5 is the only available move, and here white would be losing, if not for the move king to f5, which again leaves black with one legal move, which is the move g4. And after we take on g4, we get this very pretty checkmate with a pawn. So hope that you enjoyed the video and remember that pawns are not only used to cover squares or to promote them, they can also be used as an attacking beast. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.